All right. right. Please stand and join the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. We have two school board meetings before us tonight, and the first one uh, is our reorganizational meeting. I will act as chair to that meeting until a, a new chairperson is elected. <coughs> so now I uh, call the reorganizational board meeting to order. And the first item of business then will be to uh, proceed with the oath of office for Kirby Anderson. Um, so Kirby, if you could go to the podium, <coughs> Superintendent Ness will uh, Facility. Yes, I will be the uh, school board member oath of office. First of all, congratulations, Kirby, and, and welcome. It is an honor that you were elected to guide the education of our community's children. As you recite the oath of office, you assume a tremendous responsibility as director of our school district with duties empowered by the Minnesota legislature. This power puts you and other members of our school board in the position of being both morally and legally responsible for equitable, quality education of every student in the district. In carrying out this responsibility, you will be asked to fulfill the roles of vision, structure, accountability, and advocacy. In providing vision, the board with extensive participation of the community envisions the community's educational future and then formulates the goals, defines the outcomes, and sets the course for the public schools. To achieve the vision, the school board, the, excuse me, the board establishes a structure and creates an environment designed to ensure all students the opportunity to attain their maximum potential through a sound organizational framework. Because as a board, we must be accountable to the community, we must ensure a continuous assessment of student achievement and all conditions affecting the education of our children. As board members, we serve as education's key advocate on behalf of students, our community schools to advance the vision for our schools. Furthermore, we must strive to work together with the superintendent and staff to lead the district toward fulfilling the vision we have created, fostering excellence for every student in the areas of academic skills, knowledge, citizen, and personal development. Okay, so put my hand up. Here. Sure. All right. <laughs> Having signed the acceptance of office and office oath of office, I hereby publicly affirm my commitment to the oath of office. I swear, affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and of this state, and that I will discharge faithfully the duties of the office of school board member of Independent School District Number 544, to the best of my judgment and ability. There you go. Perfect. I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> <laughs> the next item of business is to establish a quorum, and I will act as clerk to do that. Missy Hermes, present. Matt Lemke. Here. Stephen Vigasa. Here. Melanie Cole. Here. Kirby Anderson. Here. Natalie Knudsen. Here. All right, we do have a quorum. Is there a motion to adopt, adopt the reorganizational meeting agenda? So moved. And a second? Second. Any discussion on the agenda? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, that is approved. And the uh, first uh, office for election is election of the chairperson. And I will now seek nomination for the office of chair. I will nominate Matt Lemke for Office of Chair. Second. All right. Are there? <laughs> oh. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Oh, are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations for the Office of Chair? All right. Um, if there are no further nominations, then the office or the nominations for Office of Chair are closed. I hereby declare that Matt Lemke is elected by acclamation and I direct the acting clerk to record so in the minutes. Matt. So at this point, Matt takes over running the meeting. And <coughs> what is that? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, moving on to our next nomination. I'm open for nominations for vice chairperson. I nominate Melanie Cole. Are there any further nominations for vice chairperson? Are there any further nominations for office of vice chairperson? If there are no further nominations, nominations for that office of vice chair are closed. I hereby declare uh, Melanie Cole elected by acclamation and direct the acting clerk to so record in the minutes. Opening for nominations for clerk. I nominate Missy Hermes for clerk. Are there any further nominations for clerk? Are there any further nominations for the office of clerk? If there are no further nominations, nominations for the office of clerk is closed. I, dear, I hereby declare Missy Hermes elected by acclamation and direct the acting clerk to so record in the minutes. Congratulations, Missy. Thank you. Uh, we'll open up for nominations for treasurer. I nominate Kirby Anderson for treasurer. Are there any further nominations for treasurer? Are there any further nominations for the Office of Treasurer? If there are no further nominations, nominations for the Office of Treasurer is closed. I hereby declare Kirby Anderson elected by acclamation and direct the acting clerk to so record in the minutes. Congratulations, Kirby. Moving on to item number seven. We have... Um, uh, right now, we have to set the uh, basic salary of school board at 450. Is currently at 450. There is a proposal to uh, keep that at 450. Uh, there is also a proposal to uh, have the chairperson to be increased to 550. Uh, that basic salary covers all regular and special school board meetings, work session retreats, two committee meetings a month, for and the MSBA conference. Uh, certified contract negotiation committee will be paid a stipend of 500 payable once during each contract cycle. 80 million outside of the basic salary conditions will be paid at $25 per hour. I make a motion um, similar to what is proposed but to set the uh, monthly salary at $450 per month for each of the board members. Uh, a motion that includes a stipend for $500 for the certified staff negotiating contract, but only one stipend per contract cycle. I um, wish to propose that beyond uh, two regular school board meetings and two additional meetings that, and excluding the MSBA conference that we get a uh, um, hourly rate of $25 per hour. Uh, basically the same motion minus the uh, Increase pay for the chair. So that is that is my motion. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that. Any discussion? <clears throat> well, we talked back earlier um, in July. I think when we had our retreat, we talked about the possibility of uh, elevating the um, pay for the chair because of the extra responsibilities as board chair, and. Um, uh, so I didn't know if there's a lot of commitment to that, and I just wanted to ask uh, if anyone else at the table has a strong feeling that that should be included. I just have personally felt that just in the past, uh, some history on, on the chairperson, that, it, that it's one of us that we're all board members. We, we have the opportunity to become chair, too. <coughs> and at that point in time, when you become chair, you also are assume you're going to take on some additional responsibility as chairperson. I thought that because we all vote together, um, we all have one vote, I felt there wasn't really a need to see an increase for the chairperson, at least at this point in time. All right. Any further discussion on that issue? All those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed? 
motion passes. Okay, item number eight, meeting dates, locations, and times. Uh, the meeting place will be the uh, Otter Tail, Otter Tail, Otter <laughs> Community <laughs> Room, okay, in the secondary school. Yeah. The meeting dates will be on the second and the fourth Monday of the month, starting at 5.15 p.m. Exception is July and November meetings on the third Monday of the month only, and December meeting on the second Monday of the month only. Summer meetings will begin at 7.15 a.m. Uh, just to note that the school board meeting is scheduled for October 14th, right now in two, uh, 2019, which is Columbus Day. Um, do I have a motion to set the meeting dates, location, times as noted? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Um, any discussion? All any, oh, oh, I was please. just going to say any feedback on the morning meetings? Um, really, they're. Um, it, in the last season of summer meetings, it seemed like there was crunch time where people were scrambling to get to work. Can we, um, I, I do like the morning meetings in the summer to open up your evenings f to enjoy, yeah. so um, just wanted to throw that out there. If did, we, did we run into that a lot? I can't, because I have to be at work at eight myself, and being selfish here, but um, I mean, even if we pushed it back to seven, I would be, it just gives us a little more breathing room for those of us that have to get to work. I'm guessing I'm not in the same boat as everybody. I guess I am in the same boat as at least maybe some of us here. But I like morning. Yeah. Is it a, an option to? So then, then the debate might be seven or seven fifteen. Is it an option to take some vacation or compensation time or to to stay for? Because we could basically assume a morning morning meeting should have an hour to hour and a half allotted for it. Yeah. I'm willing Absolutely. to amend my motion and have it us meet at seven o'clock instead of that. Okay, on the summer meetings. Okay. Do we I now think the, I think the, ex the okay. intent that we, you know, as board chair Mel and I talked about this last week, uh, you know, you should be looking at probably a seven to eight thirty time frame between the school board meeting and a work session. Yep. It, it, you know, with the ideas, you get out as soon as you can, <coughs> reasonable. But there should be a little time that you'd be mm -hmm. looking at preparing for, uh, but trying to get done as soon as possible, so you don't have to take too much comp time or anything. There. Right. Right. Seeking that balance between. Uh, enjoying the summers a little bit more, but not ignoring the business of the school district. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. we have an amendment to the motion it's for 7 a.m. So we need a Ooh. second. Missy, Missy is. Well, we did you make the original the motion? Yeah, she I made the motion. Now she's would making the second. Yeah. Uh, Natalie made yeah. a second. So you need to. And then Missy amended her motion to 7 a.m. To 7 a.m. Only. For so that part. yeah, you need a second. No. So now I need a second. To it. I'll second that if you all are okay with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have amended a motion to change just that part to 7 a.m. on some uh, for the summer meetings. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? We might be closer to Bob's rules than Robert's, but it's yeah. I think the intent is there. We're changing <laughs> well, the we meeting. Can, we can do, we can go, we can approve the amended and there then go back to the motion if we want to do it, Robert's. There you go. Okay. <laughs> You're fine. So, so um, all those in favor of the amended motion say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, amended motion passes. Now we can move on. If we're going to do Robert's rules, yeah. we can do. Now we are going back to the motion um, that uh, was given by Missy, seconded by Natalie. Um, the only change is that we're going to meet at 7 o'clock. Do we have uh, any further discussion on that motion with the amendment? Okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Okay, item number nine, mileage rate. The mileage rate has been the IRS recognized rate. The new IRS rate is currently set at 58 cents per mile, effective January 1st, 2019. Do I have a motion to set the mileage rate at the IRS recognized rate? So moved. Do we have a second? No second. Steve, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Item number 10 is the official newspaper. The uh, Daily Journal has been the official newspaper. Do we have a motion to designate the Daily Journal as the ISD 544 official newspaper? So moved. Melanie, do we have a second? Second. Let's see. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? 
motion passes. Item number 11 is use of the signature scan. Be it hereby resolved that the present signature scan can be used until a new signature scan is available. This is a resolution then, right? This is saying to adopt the resolution regarding? Yep. Okay, so will somebody offer that resolution and move for its adoption? Offer the resolution and move for its adoption. Okay, Steve. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any discussion on that resolution? Uh, roll call, please, quick. Uh, Melanie Cole? Yes. Steve Vegasa? Yes. Matt Lemke? Yes. Kirby Anderson? Yes. Natalie Knutson? Yes. Missy Hermes? Yes. Resolution passes. Thank you. Item number 12, we have a resolution authorizing wire transfer. Uh, the uh, authorization for wire transfer for the following business office employees. Mark Manson for sales and payroll taxes. Sherry Smith for payroll taxes and HCSP. Accounts payable secretary for rent and superintendent's contract. And accounts receivable secretary for retiree payments of insurance. Will somebody offer that? motion for wire transfer as noted above as a resolution excuse me could i interject here yes i think for me it's supposed to be sales tax and bond payments and bond payments because okay. i don't do payroll taxes oh yeah so will some way offer that resolution and move for its adoption to authorize the wire transfers as noted above <coughs> change of bond payments to mark master I'll make the motion. Melanie, do we have a second? Second. Kirby? Okay. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Stephen Begasa? Yes. Matt Lemke? Yes. Kirby Anderson? Yes. Natalie Knutson? Yes. Missy Hermes? Yes. Melanie Cole? Yes. Resolution passes. Thank you. Item number three, designate. Depository Security State Bank is our official depository. Designate Security State Bank Bank as the official depository. Do we have a motion on that? I move that we designate Security State Bank as our official depository. I think I need to recuse myself from this one. Okay, Steve's going to recuse. Second. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll take care of Kirby for a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item number 14 is a resolution authorize, authorizing to employ legal counsel. Whereas from time to time matters arise which require consultation with legal counsel. Whereas the school board may not have time to statistically hire legal counsel for a particular circumstance that has arisen and therefore a general authorization to contact legal counsel is necessary. Whereas the school board reserves a right to hire any legal counsel of its choice for any particular matter. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District 544 as follows. The superintendent or school board chairperson be and hereby are authorized to contact legal counsel as needs Required. Will somebody offer that resolution and move for its adoption? I'll offer the resolution and move for its adoption. Thank you, Steve. Is there a second? I'll second. Melanie. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Matt Lemke? Yes. Kirby Anderson? Yes. Natalie Knudsen? Yes. Missy Hermes? Yes. Melanie Cole? Yes. Stephen Megasa? Yes. Resolution passes. Thank you. Item number 15, acknowledgement of the participation of the district in Minnesota School District Liquid Asset Fund. Uh, do we have a motion to acknowledge participate, participation in the Minnesota School District Liquid Asset Fund? So moved. Yeah. I'll second. Second by Melanie. Uh, discussion, Mark, do you want to just say what we are involved? The Liquid Asset Fund is just basically a, a fund where school districts pool their money for investment purposes and uh, that way they can maximize their interest in income. And this is kind of an annual one, so. Yes. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 
Item number 16 is proposed committee representatives. I just looked that over to see. I don't believe we need a motion on this part. It's just for it. Right? It says motion, but. I did place that down just, sure. but it does, what, however you want to handle it. Okay. However you want, I was just putting it down approved. so it's up. appropriate to approve it. Yeah, I kind of decided that. Sure. On a, on a, but if you decide different, that's just fine. Does anybody <coughs> have any clarification or changes they would like as presented the committees? Okay, can we have a motion to approve those committees as presented? So moved. Steve, do we have a second? I'll second. Melanie, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Item number 17 is proposed negotiation representatives. Again, look over as presented there, just to look it over. Uh, do we have a motion to approve uh, the proposed negotiation representatives as presented? So moved. Do we have a second? Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes. And item number 18 is just our 2019 monthly school board meeting schedule. Uh, please do note that uh, the June, July, and August is now 7 o'clock instead of 7.15. And I'll get a new list out to everyone. And May, the last, yes, last, meeting, meeting. May, last meeting in May. Along with signing oh. them to um, review board bills. Yes. I place it on there. Now that we have our, our officers in place. Okay. So check your emails. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. With that, do we have a motion to adjourn our uh, reorganizational meeting? So So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Moving along. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to call our, our uh, meeting of our regular school board meeting of uh, Independent School District 544 to order. Uh, clerk, will you establish a quorum for us, please? Yes. Um, Kirby Anderson. Yes, here. Natalie Knutson. Um, Stephen Vincent. Uh, here. Melanie Cole. Here. Missy Kennedy's <coughs> present. We have a quorum. But I oh, Matt Lemke. I am here. <laughs> 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 I haven't been trained yet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's, yeah. Trying to get comfortable in her new role. <laughs> right. We do have a quorum. So we're moving on to, uh, we need to approve the agenda. Um, as sent up, there are no changes, correct? No, not, I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's an alive dad or agenda besides. So sure. Depending on when you looked at it, if there was the tweaks here or there, but okay. Yes. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The agenda passes. Item number D, acknowledgements. Uh, thank you to the following for their donation to the Kennedy Secondary School Music Department. Helen Erkerbrecht, trumpet. Layla Salcedar, Salcedar, flute. Al and Darcy Hickeritz, uh, flute. Terry Brook, trombone. Carol Kern, clarinet. Richard Prepernal, trombone. Tom Wolf, olds, trombone. Jill Williamson, two trombones. Barry and Kate Dolan, flute. Margaret Larson, trombone. Manley, also trombone. Dwayne and Cindy Barsh, clarinet. And Dean and Julian Kutzmer for the donation of supplies to Shelley Shonek's classroom at McKinley School. So thank you for all those donations. Uh, moving on to reports, uh, we'll start with myself with Lakes Country Service Co-op Board. We did meet this uh, past Thursday. It was just a regular, I should say it was a regular school, uh, regular meeting because it was a reorganizational meeting. So we did have that going on. Um, 
but other than that, it was just a very standard meeting, nothing to really highlight uh, that meeting. It was just a regular meeting, to be honest, um, with some policies and stuff like that. Um, with Minnesota High School League, they do not meet now until February, so I will have nothing to report on them for this month. So, Natalie Knudsen, Wellness and Policy. Um, policy group has not met since the last meeting that I was present. Um, and the Wellness Committee meeting just met last week. Um, they are hosting a winter walk to school day on February 6th, which it sounds like um, last year they had some pretty good participation. So regardless of the weather, it sounds like the teachers are trying to get the kids out. Um, food service is continuing to work on improving um, the healthy options and the, the fresh options is kind of the biggie. They um, just finished completing and updating all the food allergy forms. Um, the, they're installing a large TV in the cafeteria that's going to be um, mounted and used for advertising of just um, things that are going on in, within the school, things that are related to the food that they're eating, fun facts, um, different projects and that sort of thing that's happening within the school. So it's going to be kind of an active portal for the kids to be walking by. And that was um, granted through the LRH Foundation. And they're also going to be using some of that money from the foundation to improve the cafeteria boards um, at the elementary schools too. Um, they, yeah, just continue to implement some new sides and some new items, so I just kind of told parents to keep their eyes out for some new things that are continuing to, to evolve down there. And then um, in December, just before the holiday, um, Kristen Tools ALC students and Kate Hychek's um, wellness class launched the Thrive Initiative, the Three Good Things um, app that went out to the community. After just four days of the, the two-week period, they had 184 community members enrolled um, submitting their Three Good Things every evening. And they will be reporting back at some point on all of the data and all the, the answers and submissions that they received, but have not heard anything yet. Um, the next uh, wellness meeting is Tuesday, March 12th. We're always looking for active participation within the community. So um, any, anybody's welcome. March 12th at 345 here in the Otter Community Room. Any questions for Natalie? Thank you, Natalie. Mm -hmm. Melanie Cole, Special Ed Co-op, Region 1, Finance and Activities. The uh, Special Education Cooperative met today with the full board and um, one of the highlights of each meeting is the director's report by Shannon Erickson who today reviewed the child count and noted that we have 95 additional spe special education students in our uh, cooperative districts. So that's sprinkled amongst um, all of the districts that increased number. And then she had the um, autism specialist come in who, who described that uh, you know her busy work with identifying students with autism and the process that she uses for that. Um, that were, those were the primary facets of that meeting today. Um, and then uh, Region 1, the technology specialist group out of Moorhead, really the balance of the, the uh, focus there has shifted with the addition of all the synergy schools and the implementation, the staffings, uh, additional staffings to meet all the, the added schools um, since the kind of the reorganization last year where, where uh, another provider went out of business. So that's kind of the highlights there. A lot of talking about staffing and, and how that's working. And then they ended the uh, reimbursement accounts for the, um, that's done now, the employee reimbursement for their expenditures. So uh, we didn't meet yet for finance and activities. Those uh, couple of subgroups for the school haven't met yet. So that's that's about it. Any questions for Melanie? Thank you, Melanie. Melissa Hermes, Staff Development and Curriculum Review. 
Well, the staff development committee met um, online. They did a Google Meet um, because we were supposed to meet on January 7th when what was a snow day or a bad weather day. And um, there is about $3,800 in the balance remaining for that committee to use for um, um, teacher um, staff development. But also they talked quite a bit about the upcoming um, staff development day, which is on January 18th, and there are a lot. The, they've planned a, a, looks like a fantastic day of, um, of different workshops and speakers and so on um, for teachers to attend. And then, any questions on that? How did it go? Being online, and that did you know, well. it went really well. Not okay. because um, not everyone was aware that we were going to do that. Then there were a few people that said later, "Oh, I didn't see that coming up," but I thought it worked out okay. Yeah, it went well. So if they decided to do that again in the, in the future, it, I thought it went fine. Um, the curriculum review advisory committee. Oh. Okay, the Curriculum Review Advisory Committee did not meet in, um, we meet next Monday. Any other questions for Melissa? Thank you. Steve Higgis, uh, <coughs> legislative liaison and meet and confer. So, as far as the legislature is concerned, it's more of reorganizing right now with the new, I think there's like 33 new Senate, new, I don't know if it's House and Senate together, I believe that's what it is. Um, so there's, there's, they're basically reorganizing the committees, the education committees. I think they met today. The education committee and I was working, so I didn't get to watch the, the, the meeting, but um, I'll have more um, information on that next next uh, time I give a report. Um, so there's not a whole lot going on in my, uh, I mean, there's the, the biggest thing that they're looking at is, uh, in terms of education, is the funding formula for uh, what schools get for each student to make it a little more simple. <coughs> Um, which there'll be, I'm sure, many bills produced, and we don't know which one's going to pass. So I, I, I don't like to just say what's being introduced because I don't want to give an idea that that's what's going to happen. Um, I like to report on things that are actually happening. So um, as far as the meeting confer, this is my first report on this, so Jerry might have to fill in some of the dots or connect some of the dots here. but. Uh, so we did meet, uh, Natalie and I were at that meeting, and um, on the agenda they talked a little bit about the PLC, which is uh, uh, professional, learning, uh, professional Learning Communities, yep. and that's a bit, uh, you know, I am a new board member so I don't know everything yet, but it's really continuing ed for, for teachers, and it's, it's a big deal to be attending these things, and uh, what they talked about was the, uh, what to do if you miss one. Teachers that feel like it's uh, basically right now what's in place is 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 in a nutshell just a makeup essay, basically a reflection paper on some of the material that was covered to, to show that you actually reviewed it. Basically, I think that's why that's in place. Um, makes sense to me, um, and and there's opinions on both sides. And I guess it, it, at the end of that issue, Jerry, we it was more of a, you know we had been doing this for ten years, this this, and now it's time to relook at should we alter this or not and that was going somewhere yep so we will continue yeah. to if, if a staff member misses a PLC <coughs> there'll be a reflection paper that they write basically mm -hmm. about the PLC so we know they're up to speed on what happened at, the, at that end but we have a it's the end of our second cycle of evaluation so we will be meeting uh, with the EA and the teacher evaluation group and this will be a, a, a a uh, point of discussion as well. I don't. I anticipate that uh, we'll, we'll have some sort of makeup, whether they can uh, uh, do a Google Meet, and I think that's a great way to be. So if you're at home with a sick child, for example, and they happen to be down for a nap, you can get on Google Meet and be part of the PLC. So we'll we'll make arrangements so they can participate somehow. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, they also talked a bit about the calendar. Um, the only thing that I really took away from that was like, what are we, what are we doing with school uh, snow days? You know, and some teachers, there are some people in the committee were, well, you know, the the meeting, the, having the snow day at the very end of the year is, it's garbage time, quote unquote. And I guess that's my word for it. But 
you know, kids are detached and that, they're get, wanting to get out of school, is there a better option? And actually, that's in our work session, so if that's uh, something that I think we'll be talking about. Um, if anything needs to be changed, or uh, I don't know, it's just more of an opening up that discussion, in my understanding. Um, let's see. Uh, the new business that they talked about was uh, the struggles with having not having enough subs in the, uh, for Paris. Um, it is a, a problem. I mean, we're, we're short people, especially with uh, you know with people having sick kids and the flu season. Um, we just we need a lot more uh, Paris subs, and how do we attract more? Um, is is kind of the question that was just introduced. Um, the other thing they talked about was uh, all of the reminders that go off when there's a snow day. <laughs> and personally, I, I get the school stuff and I get the parent stuff. I had like seven uh, alerts, but honestly, I, I mean, some people hate them. I, I'm just glad I'm getting reminded because I remember back in the day when we had to sit and listen to the radio and go through all of the things, and it's just evolved so much. So um, uh, that's just something that... that uh, you know, we, there are ways to reduce the amount of words you get. You can log into Synergy or the Parent View, whatever it's called, and, and, and turn off a lot of these alerts if you're a parent or part of the district here. So um, I think it's just, uh, you know, hopefully out of that will be more clear instructions of how to reduce those alerts. And, uh, it is an example that uh, when you sign up for School Messenger, you might have said, <coughs> oh, I want the text, I want the email, I want the phone call to my home phone. I did it myself, so now I we come back out, so now I'm not having my home phone. So you you can manage those, and, and you can also just take your phone and put on do not disturb until after six o'clock, and we'll just, we'll help people manage their alerts, uh, but but we think it's uh, it's better to have more notices than not, uh, than not getting notified. And it, the other day, we had two alerts because we called up, we were two hours late first, <coughs> The weather did not clear. Then we then we uh, decided to uh, call off school. So then you ended up with two, and you might have gotten six. Probably. Yeah. But, uh, it woke you up. Yeah. <laughs> so if there's anything I missed, Jerry, no, I think you're good. Right. For anybody that lives out of town, it was a great call to make. There were cars in a ditch all over all our way, and uh, it was it was very icy. The gravel roads, especially, were very very icy. Yeah, it was so, a great car. Yeah, 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 still are. That's true. Yeah, it wasn't nice today either. Steve, I have a question back on legislative. Is Governor Walls going to keep the same person at the Department of Education, or is he choosing someone new? He did. He already did. Yeah, he already did. Mm -hmm. Mary. Rick Recker. Rick Rick Recker Rick Recker. 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 There we go. Yes. Oh, okay. So Brenda Concilius has uh, completed her term. Any other questions for Steve? Just back to the snow day, I got a, a couple of messenger things after that meeting, so we can discuss that a little bit more. Just some potential ideas on what we could do differently to eliminate the garbage days, mm -hmm. like you were talking about. So. Sure. Okay. We'll move on. Kirby Anderson, 544 Education Foundation. Yes, we did meet um, last Thursday, January 10th, and uh, that was my first time that I've had a chance to sit in with that group and it was uh, it was very interesting. I know most of the people on there and I have served with the uh, Fergus Falls Community College, College Foundation Board before so so it's, uh, it's a good fit. Um, Mindy Feuder is the director. She uh, talked about, they had sent out an uh, email to all the alumni um, in mid-December and they had some statistics. 32% of the alumni that got those um, emails opened them and but only 7% clicked onto the link so the 32% is a little higher than average for mass emails. The 7% is a little lower than average for uh, actually going into the, to the link. Um, they have scholarship applications available in the counseling offices and on the websites, encouraging students to, uh, to go ahead and fill those out. Um, they have some, some good, good news, lots of uh, donations coming in. Um, one of the concerns is there's some of the major pledges are coming due. They had some, I think, five-year pledges of like $540 per year, mm -hmm. and they started that five years ago. So some of those are coming due, and they're trying to get uh, those donors to re-enlist maybe for another five years. Um, so that's that's ongoing. Um, there is going to be the annual golf tournament in July um, for, as a fundraiser, and also uh, they have uh, a new logo, and they're coming out this spring with a with a launch with a new marketing program. And 
the board members are actually personally signing off on letters and, and trying to make it more personal. And in fact, even going to uh, to the radio station and, and some of the, the morning shows like Mary Dolan has and, and meeting once a month or so and having board members go in and sit and explain what the foundation does and, and encouraging um, students to, to uh, to fill out applications and also what other things the Education Foundation does for the school district. And lastly, uh, they asked if any of us can do our part to share foundation information on social media, um, whether it's Facebook or I'm not on Twitter or Instagram or some of those newer things, but uh, if we can share what we have on Facebook um, and and with with our circle of friends, uh, whatever it, whatever it takes, because it's a multifaceted marketing program and that would just be a small part of it, but also important. So that was all. Any questions? Any questions for Kirby? Thank you, Kirby. Uh, Superintendent Ness. Yes, just a few items here, mainly related to our uh, calendar that's coming up right now. So this Thursday, uh, January 17th, is the end of the first semester. Half, uh, half of the year is complete, which is, wow, wow mm -hmm. you can't imagine. And uh, so on Friday, there's no school for students. Friday the 18th will be an in-service, staff in-service that uh, Missy was talking about. Uh, the keynote speaker is Dr. Jill Nel Nelson. Uh, she's from NDSU. She's talking on daring greatly. It's a lot about uh, burnout, mental health that fits nicely and with the Thrive program, Bounce Back Project. Uh, so doing that. And then like you said, we had a number of breakout sessions. And then in the afternoon, uh, a staff, staff will be working all afternoon in their professional learning communities. Monday then is also no school, and that's Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, so no school for students. And staff, that's a work day. Uh, so there is a tremendous amount of work finishing up grading from one quarter or one semester and getting ready for all new courses, especially at the high school level uh, for the next year. So that, and then so then the Tuesday, uh, the 22nd is the first day of the second semester. Uh, for our school board members, we have, it's a big week for us. Uh, this is our biggest learning opportunity for, for the year, it's the MSBA, Minnesota School Board Association Leadership Conference. Um, they're bringing back a keynote speaker that was here in 2013, the, the author of the Trust Edge, I think it's uh, David Horschlager, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Uh, he was very, very well received in coming back, so uh, building trust, and certainly that's a, a case where as a board, administration, teachers, you, you all want trust of whoever. Teachers want trust of their students, uh, you know, administrators of the teachers in, in the community for the school board. So it's all about developing that trust, and that is on Thursday and Friday. And then January 7th, like I said, we had no school. The calendar states right now that uh, Monday, uh, Monday, May 28th is, is when students would make that up. Uh, I guess we'll be talking about that at the work session. What I would recommend is we probably should wait a couple months, we then make one ch calendar change where, all right, we'll be going to school uh, Monday, Tuesday, depending on how many days we have. So there's no there's no rush to ch change the calendar right now. That's why you don't see it on the agenda. That's all I have. Any questions for Superintendent Ness? Thank you. Moving on to our general consent items, we have the minutes for the December 10th, 2018 school board meeting. <coughs> Bills and Treasurer's Report. Natalie. Um, yep. So this um, this month is kind of our low point, the, just finalizing everything for the end of the year. Our big bond payment went out, so we're sitting at about $6.5 million at our low point. So it's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, personnel, Elaine Chanky. Sure, support staff hires. We have Sabrina Noon. She is going to be ECFE a, uh, classroom assistant over at our heritage building. Um, support staff retirement, Lorraine Hicks. She'll be retiring at the end of the school year and a little later on, on her new business, you'll see a resolution on the retirement. Certified teacher hires and contract changes. We have a, a few miscellaneous items under here. Sarah Christensen, she is going to be a long-term substitute teacher at Adams for the rest of the school year. We have an over overload contract, um, basically one class for second semester for Lori Roder for college writing um, and professional technical writing. An overload contract for Jennifer Roos for facts and um, a contract increase of, an, again, one class for the second semester for Ethan Johnson, which equates to 0 0.0833 FTE, and that's for public speaking. Um, Ann Sco, IQ Academy teacher, she's receiving rights to a point one six six seven FTE beginning second semester of 1818 school year. She just wants to redo some of her um, 
class size that she um, teaches for our IQ Academy and also has another job um, that she teaches in another district. So she's requesting to rescind those rights to um, some classes. And then the coach hire, we have Joyce Monk for head girls swim coach, um, effective basically immediately. So that's I, what I, I just have. want to clarify, uh, Jen Roos uh, at FAX, she's a language arts teacher, she, she'll get a variance and she's teaching at the ALC, which is allowed, so uh, <coughs> you, some, uh, you, you have some uh, variances there. Ethan Johnson is also at the, um, at the ALC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Item number four is we have a 2018 through the 2020 collective bargaining agreement between ISD 544 and Education Minnesota Fergus Falls Special Education Paraprofessional Association. With that, do I have a motion to approve the general consent items? <coughs> so moved. Thank you. Do we have a second? Yes. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Gen general consent items pass. There is no old business. Moving on to new business, we have the revision to the Current school board policies and 601 school district curriculum and instruction goals and 613 graduation requirements. Do you want to speak on that before we? In both of these cases, these uh, bring into play into the new ESSA and it's uh, recommend, uh, these were recommended uh, by MSBA. So, so. Do we have a motion to approve these revisions? So moved. We'll do we have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item number two, we have an agreement with Wadena Adult Basic Education, ABE, program to transfer programming of the, of the Battle Lake, Underwood, and Henning to Fergus Falls ABE program effective July 1st, 2019. Maybe Mark can talk a little bit about that too. Do you want to just it's just a standard issue agreement that we've had with them, or excuse me, like we've had with Ashby, only Wadena is now dropping their ABE program, and they now want to be incorporated into our program. Uh, I don't know what year it was, but in the past, they used to be part of us, and they split off and now they're coming back. Okay. So. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. I'll Go ahead. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item number three would be resolved by the School Board of Independent School District 544, State of Minnesota, as follows. Mark Masson, Business Manager of Independent School District 544, is hereby authorized to sell, assign, and transfer securities on behalf of the Independent School District 544, Fergus Falls School District. Does somebody offer that resolution move for its adoption? I'll offer the resolution and move for its adoption. Excuse me, do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, discussion, Mark, do you want to? Yeah, what is, what is happening in here is back in 1981, there was some stock donated to the school district for an ongoing scholarship. That stock came to the school district listed as something like superintendent of ISD 544, Peter Madison, irrevocable trust, blah, 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 long line. <laughs> Many years later, the IRS has now declared that, for whatever purpose, that the name on the stock has to match the holder of the stock. So it has to be changed to Independent School District Number 544. And in order for that to happen, you can't just go to the, the stock order uh, issuer and say change the name, you've got to sell the old stock, and buy the new stock. And so that's what this resolution is allowing me to do is to sell this 400 shares of Otter Tail stock and put it in the correct name. Do you have to sell it though? Can you just transfer it? Because we're not create a taxable, well I suppose the district. The district doesn't matter. doesn't matter, we're not, we don't get taxed on it. But that's the procedure is basically you're, even if I was transferring it, I would have to have some authority. I think even it says in here, it's sell, assign, and transfer. So it gives me the authority to do that. Any other dis 
discussion on the resolution. Is this really about the only occasion where you see this being warranted? This is the only occasion <coughs> I've had in 35 and a half years, <laughs> but it has to deal with somebody who donated stock back in 1981. And when you transfer stock, I you have to do a medallion stamp. And those are kind of the big correct. Thing. I do those at the bank, not that I would do it for the school district, but mm -hmm. um, you, you just have to have something on paper showing that you're the authorized party for the school, and that's why this is probably here. Because we, we can't do it. So. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Now, Lemke. Yes. Kirby Anderson. Yes. Natalie Knutson. Yes. Missy Hermes, yes. Melanie Cole, yes. Stephen Begaston, yes. Resolution passes. Thank you. Item number four is a resolution on the retirement of Laureen Hicks. Whereas Laureen Hicks began her employment with the Fergus Falls Public Schools in September 2012, and whereas Laureen has been a valued employee with the Fergus Falls Public Schools for the past seven years, and whereas Laureen has done an excellent job in our cafeteria. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the Fergus Falls School Board to thank Lorraine Hicks for her seven years of dedicated service to the Fergus Falls Public Schools. Will somebody offer that resolution and move for its adoption? I offer that resolution and move for its adoption. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Kirby Anderson. Yes. <laughs> Natalie Knutson. Yes. Missy Hermes, yes. Melanie Cole, yes. Stephen Figasa, yes. And Matt Lemke, yes. The resolution passes. Thank you. Item number five is the tentative FY 2019 seniority list for the Independent School District 544, Fergus Falls Public Schools. There is no action on this. It's just the first reading, so I think this is more for everybody else to look at, but two, but just so that we look it over and make sure that they, it's correct. And actually, I have sent it out to the certified staff. They have 10 days to notify me of any changes. Once it, we have that time passes, we actually can officially approve the final one. Yeah. And number six is the 2019-2020 Fergus Falls School District calendar. I am going to have Superintendent Ness speak on it first before we Sure. Yep. Uh, the process that we use is uh, we work through a meet and confer. One of the key items every year is uh, bringing that. Typically what I do is I, I bring a, a sample calendar that sort of rolls over from last year uh, to the next year. And, uh, you know, this year we're graduating the Friday before Memorial Day uh, with with a Christmas Day and New Year's Day on a Wednesday. It just, it, we just really couldn't make that work. Um, so uh, I'll... I'll I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll start with the uh, fall in service, four days, uh, very typical Monday through um, Thursday, the last week of August. We're, we're using our float day again, where staff can use to prepare, document that. That went very, very well. Uh, parent teachers are in October, have not changed the format. Uh, we, we did, uh, we have two full weeks. That's probably the highlight of the calendar. There's two full weeks at Christmas, and it's uh, when, again, with Christmas and, and New Year's being on a Wednesday, it's very <coughs> difficult one way or the other to uh, have that, so that, that's going to be a big hit. Um, and it just goes through, again, the, uh, this is a calendar, much like this year, where um, the makeup days are at the end of the year. There really isn't, it's a pretty tight calendar in the sense that there's not uh, days here and there that we, that we can make up because we used all of our extra days in that Christmas vacation. Uh, the, the battle, um, I'm not going to call them garbage days, I'm going to call them, uh, they're, they're valued days and, and our teachers need to teach to the end and, and we, we encourage them that you have to go right up to the end and uh, they, they have strategies to do that. So uh, many, many, many schools go to uh, June 12th or even the 19th. So it, it's for us to go a week after Labor Day is, is not unusual. It's a mindset that we have to get in and I think uh, we'll, we'll be just fine uh, with making up those days. So that is the count and we, we are, we are, this is a recommendation from the meet and confer to the board to approve this tonight. Do we have a motion to approve the 2019-2020 Fergus Falls School District calendar as presented? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Jerry, um, who's on the, was on the legislative committee a couple years ago? There was a e-learning bill introduced two, 
two years ago, I think, that that, that never did pass to, to make up some days via e-learning. Um, um, I, I think we can much. do that if we choose to. We, we, we have, have not gone to We have a set of framework to do that. Right. right. We would have to have a lot of the schools that do that have one-on-one uh, -on -one devices so sure. students can bring home and they have mm -hmm. those. We're, we're not quite set up that okay. way. Okay. And we can talk about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That, that had come up in yeah. my conversation, too, with one of the teachers. And mm -hmm. she just said, with the last snow day, she still reach out to all her students and mm -hmm. have them working on something. Sure. So, and, and mostly specifically with seniors, just because they graduate and then coming back to finish out. Close to the end of the semester yeah. and all yeah. of those things, sure. Yeah, that's more uh, relevant yeah. to her. Mm -hmm. We just have to take into account that not all of our students have computers or yeah. Wi-Fi at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion passes. Um, our next regular school board meeting will be Monday, January 28th, 2019 at 5.15, right here at the Otter Community Room at Kennedy Secondary School. Uh, following the, our meeting, uh, we will go into a work session to talk about Talent Development Committee, uh, Municipal school, school Board Association Conference details, the Heritage Building, uh, work experience, <coughs> uh, superintendent hiring process, snow makeup days, hockey booster request. Mm -hmm. and then we might not be getting home <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a full work session. Uh, so with that, do we have a uh, motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. 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 Mrs. Yeah. got that one. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank okay.